After a Warner Brothers and DC Studios rehaul led to the DCEU being rebooted, Blue Beetle, which was originally going to be a straight to HBO Max DCEU movie, has now become a theatrically released movie that takes place in the rebooted universe, making it technically the first movie in the DCU. Unfortunately, DC has not had much luck at the box office lately as the DCEU has had an unparalleled levels of flops, from Birds of Prey to The Suicide Squad to Black Adam, Shazam Fury of the Gods, and most recently The Flash and based on projections, the series of box office failures do not seem to be ending with Blue Beetle, which is highly unfortunate because, like the Suicide Squad before it, and unlike all the rest, Blue Beetle really did not deserve this unfortunate box office because it's better than expected. I was thinking that a good word of mouth might help the box office a bit and make a sequel which I would like to see more likely. So I'll be adding to that. This video will be my review for what is technically the first movie in the DCU, but not officially Blue Beetle and this video will not contain spoilers because it is supposed to be a video that is going to convince you to watch Blue Beetle. Now I'm not blind to reality here, I do know that a big reason people aren't going to watch this aside from just DC's brand being dead at this point and superhero movie fatigue definitely being real is that it does look like a standard origin story movie and yeah a lot of it is, a lot of it is the typical superhero origin story including the hero gaining powers, fighting someone with almost identical powers to him and a pretty standard or maybe even substandard love story. I will also admit that Blue Beetle does suffer from a classic origin story movie issue of being a bit boring until Jaime gets his powers. Although that's pretty early in the movie so it's not a huge issue. All of that being the case, there are plenty of both big and small things that elevate Blue Beetle past what is otherwise a generic origin story movie to something rather special. The most important of these things being everything and anything to do with Blue Beetle, which is important for a Blue Beetle movie. For one, Jaime Reyes is absolutely perfectly cast. Zola Maraduena was a top fan choice for a reason. He fits the role perfectly in the fact that he looks like Jaime, but also has great chemistry with the entire cast, including the Scarab, brings a high level of charisma in front to the role while implementing just a bit of his karate skills from Cobra Kai, and gives a surprisingly good performance as he is given a fair amount of emotional moments. And a lot of what happens in this otherwise typical superhero origin story is put into a far more uncomfortable or even scary light, which I thought was handled really well and helped the movie set itself apart. And I think Jaime's reactions to these things just feel so genuine, as are the reactions of basically everyone in this movie, but Jaime specifically, which is the most important thing, has been perfectly cast. Something else we've known about Blue Beetle since the set photo surfaced is that the Blue Beetle costume is absolutely perfect. Having now seen it fully in action beyond the trailers, it's only become more true. The costume is ripped straight out of the comics, looks incredible in motion, and is used in such a way that that elevates the visuals of the movie tremendously. There are a dozen or so, maybe a bit more superheroes whose costumes have been perfected on screen, and Blue Beetle, with his second live action costume, is now one of them. To add to that, Blue Beetle's powers are used in such a way that is both visually pleasing and creative, as the action is allowed to vary wildly from scene to scene due to Jaime's ability to conjure any weapon, with a lot of those weapons and a lot of the fighting style taking clear influence from Young Justice and Injustice 2, as well as maybe Cobra Kai, maybe they took a bit of influence from Zola Maraduena's experience there. Like I said, Blue Beetle was originally going to be a straight to HBO Max movie, but even now that it isn't, it has a far smaller budget than the previous DC movies that have been recently released at just 105 million, which is why I was surprised at how good the movie looks. The CGI is good for the most part, I won't lie, there were maybe two or three shots where the CGI was off, but not only were these shots few and far between, but also the CGI is way better than the CGI from The Flash or even Shazam 2, and mostly up to par with the typical higher budget superhero movie. The cinematography can also be really good at times, especially in the final showdown. And Palmyra City, the main setting of this movie, was really nice looking. It was a city that was created for this movie. It did debut in the comics around seven months ago, but that was in a comic that was also created for this movie. And it's just really nice looking, very unique. It's very DC Universe to have this movie set in a fictional city that has a very unique aesthetic to it, and I think that really adds to the visuals as well. So, with the fantastic suit, creative use of powers in the really good action scenes, the good CGI, and fantastic cinematography, all in a very unique looking, very aesthetically pleasing setting, Blue Beetle is a generally really good looking movie with visuals that do elevate it past the typical superhero origin movie schlock. 
Additionally, the movie has a very clear and present appreciation, or even respect, for Blue Beetle's entire lore. From the alien origin of the Scarab, to the legacy of the Blue Beetle mantle, going from Dan Garrett, who was able to activate the Scarab, to Ted Kord, who wasn't, and especially above everything, everything to do with Ted Kord's superhero career, like how he's described, his costume, his gadget, and especially the bug, which is maybe my favorite DC Universe vehicle, and it's used so well in this movie. There's a clear love and respect for the underappreciated, and very underrated Blue Beetle lore, like the exact opposite of Black Adam, which felt like it was a movie that was made by The Rock, who wanted to play a character who's as powerful as Superman, and that's it. He didn't even want Black Adam to meet Shazam at all. He clearly didn't care about the lore. This movie felt like it was made by people who cared about the lore of Blue Beetle, and that's maybe the reason they made it. And that's something I absolutely loved. Again, if you don't really love the character of Blue Beetle, then you probably won't get much out of it. But as someone who does, I I could say confidently that there's a lot that I appreciated about how much this movie respected that lore. If there was anything about this movie I was not looking forward to going off of the trailers, it was basically every single character that wasn't Jaime Reyes. The movie focusing on family reminded me way too much of the family from the Shazam movies, who were fun in the first, although only really one of them stood out, and they went way overboard with them in the second. The villain seemed incredibly generic, and the love interest was a completely original character. Having seen the movie, almost everything about these characters, and even the villains, were better than I expected. With these sole exception of Victoria Cord, who outside of a very lackluster motivation that was maybe mentioned twice, she came off as cartoonishly evil, and Susan Sarandon didn't exactly give her best performance. For most of the runtime, Carapax was also predictably underwhelming, with little to no dialogue and two similar powers to Blue Beetle, but the third act climax took a very unique turn on the way that this villain's backstory is laid out, which allowed for him to both fit the underlying theme of the movie and act as a well handled proper emotional moment. Still, I will admit that this might have been too little too late, leaving Carapax as a mostly generic villain who only becomes interesting near the end of the movie, but it's in the supporting characters outside of the villains where I think this movie shined more than I thought it would. The Reyes family provide the core emotional hook of the movie, which I can't get into without going into spoilers, so I won't, but I will say it certainly works well. Blue Beetle never reached wholly impressive levels of emotion or anything, but again, it was definitely something beyond generic, and the family, as well as Carapax, are also a part of the subtle, but not subtle enough to not clearly notice theme of the movie, and how the experiences of these characters parallel some of the Hispanic or Mexican experiences of the real world, and even more so than the emotional component, I think this worked well. Blue Beetle clearly has something to say and said it without any actual effect on the plot or characters, and finally, the Reyes family were surprisingly funny, Rudy, and surprisingly enough, the grandmother are absolutely hilarious, mostly thanks to them as well as Jaime and his interactions with Kajida. Blue Beetle is one of the funnier DC movies, only really beat out by maybe Shazam and the Suicide Squad, but definitely gives both of them a run for their money. Jaime and Jenny do definitely have good chemistry, but I would also say that the romance moved far too quickly, and I don't think should have been resolved in this movie. Instead, it was her backstory as Ted Kord's daughter, her knowledge of the Blue Beetle tech, and her interactions with the Reyes family where this character shined the most. Although, all that in mind, I'm not sure Jenny was an entirely worthwhile addition to the Blue Beetle lore. I'm kinda worried that if this does get a sequel, or maybe if she ever appears again, they're gonna turn her into a superhero like the Red Beetle or something like that, and I'm just hoping they don't. One final thing I'll say about this movie is that the music is really, really good. There's this emotional climax in this movie where the music is absolutely fantastic, and beyond that, I do think that the score in general is really nice. In conclusion, Blue Beetle does have a lot of elements of a very generic origin story that does suffer from being a bit boring until Jaime gets his powers with some not great villains and a undercooked love story, but I think all of that is almost entirely made up for and more with some great visuals, great action, great cinematography, a very clear love and respect for the characters and lore, a ton of heart and soul, a very entertaining and funny movie that features a perfectly cast main character, a perfect live action costume, and a fantastic execution of what makes this character special, alongside a very entertaining supporting cast who do provide the core emotional hook, a very nice, I think, underlying theme, and some great music as well, 
at an 8 out of 10, Blue Beetle is easily the best DC movie of the year and would have definitely been pretty high up in the DCEU ranking if it were a DCEU movie. Instead, it's a pretty great first outing for the DCU that really did not deserve to flop as badly as it is, which sucks because there's a ton of potential for a sequel and even a trilogy if they want to go down that route, and that seems almost completely impossible at this point. At least we'll see him again at some point in the DCU, but I would have really loved to see an entire Blue Beetle trilogy. Unfortunately, the movie is not doing well.